Well, you cannot see me, but you can see the screen, right? And have a look at this little sucker here. Offcut garage, generic Venus device offline, it says, offline. I'm still, well, I'm in my lunch break at work, but the bloody Raspberry Pi is offline. There's no access to anything. Why is this coming up? Here you go. See, there it says last updated four hours ago. I don't know, there was it 48.6% state of charge. I'm not sure. I don't know what, what's going on. I cannot reach anything. Remote console, turn screen. I'm not sure if this works for you now on the screen. See, it says fail to connect. And I can't log into my network, to my server and everything, and I can see all the access points in my house and in the garage. And all the other devices connected to to um, this access point in the off-grid garage are working. So there's no network issue, but the Rust is not responding anymore. And I just hope it is just, it has just tripped, but it's not dead. I really hope there's nothing wrong with the Rust or the buck converter. I know a lot of people have said, don't use a buck converter. It's not safe. They can go mad and then you've got 50 volts on your Rust and it fries it. Well, I just hope you're not right. Well, there's nothing I can do from here. I don't want to hassle my wife with that. Having a look at the switchboard there and the electrical cabinet and figure out what lights are on and what not. She's got no idea what to look at. So, yeah, well, this is a strange start to a video now, right? Um, yeah. I have no idea what else to do. There's nothing. See the off-grid garage? These are all my devices here and everything is last seen. Here, there it says it's 921. That's the gateway. That's the Rust P. 921.12. And that's it. Okay, that'll be a big surprise when we come home, right? I, I haven't got a camera with me, so I'm just talking to the phone now. You can see the screen. And I don't know if this is good or bad. Uh, well, clearly it's bad. I just hope I restart the Rust and it's good again. That would be the best outcome I can think about. Okay, I think that's all for now, and um, yeah, I'll see you again when I'm going home. I'll take you with me then. Okay, my friend, so before we start anything, I have to wear the shirt, apparently. There we go. All right. Okay, I already know what is going on here. I did some testing from work on my mobile phone and as I said I could connect to the server inside the house so internet connection was fine and I could connect to the little access point on the outside here. Uh, let me show you. This one there. This one there. There. This is a TP-Link travel router and it's only connected to a 5 volt USB and the blue cord goes inside here. It's all the way along there and goes to my router over there. This is just a router, but it works only as an access point. So the blue cable comes in there and this one supplies here the garage with internet. It's actually pretty fast most of the time. And the, um, the internet is of course inside the house and this is just a wireless bridge setup for my internet connection. So I'm getting 35 megabit. So it's okay, it's all right. So now the Raspberry Pi is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I'll show you. The blue light will be on and the red light on the front will be on. And I need to open this one first here. I've got some cables hanging out. I'm doing an experiment here, which I cannot show you at the moment. Yeah, here you go. Everything is online. Nothing has blown up. Nothing gets warm here. Um, yeah. 
there we go, 23, 21 degrees has the uh, back converter, 1915. So it's only a little bit warm. It's a little bit warmer over here, but yeah, here 28, 30 degrees it has on the coil. That is all. And the rust peak gets only 23 here on the outside. So nothing traumatic. Everything is good, everything is running. The rust peak is collecting data as it should. And it has reported back to the network a couple of times. So I could see it coming online after three, four hours. Could see the data coming through. And it was all good, but I couldn't connect to it. And then I could connect to the remote control from the website and could see that the Wi-Fi is only one bar. I said, well, that is strange because the access point is right over here. And usually I get about 94 to 96% reception, but one bar said something is wrong with the access point here. And then I said, well, this one here has the same network name as the one inside the house. So what the Rust did, it connected to the house network. And because both roller doors are closed here, which are metal as well, the cabinet was closed, I got only one bar. So I could log into the remote console of the Rust and could go through the menu. It took me like an hour to scroll through, uh, scroll through because it lost connection all the time. And I could connect to the Wi-Fi menu inside the Rust and could see it is connecting to the Wi-Fi with one bar. And I could see all the other Wi-Fi's the Rust can see as well. And I said, hang on a moment. This is actually seeing a Telstra 1C whatever network. And this is an old Telstra router here. So what happened is this one, for some reason, to this morning at 10.21, it reset itself, it, it factory resets itself for no particular reason. This one is running for the last three years in here since I've got this installation here done. And 24 seven, it never gets turned off unless the BMS shuts off my system now here. Now it has factory reset itself for some reason. So I need to go in and reprogram the Wi-Fi, set this all up on the network again, and then the Rust will connect to this access point here again. And everything should be sweet. <laughs> I was, I was really, I had the Victron VIM running on my work computer this morning to check some numbers here because I'm running this experiment at the moment. I checked all this stuff and then all of a sudden I couldn't connect anymore. I said, well, hang on, the numbers are not moving anymore. Like last updated 36 minutes ago. I said, wow, that is weird. And then I contacted my wife and said, is the internet not working? She said, no, it's working, it's all good. So and then I logged into the server and I could see everything else. I could ping the um, travel router outside here, but I haven't tried from there to log into this router here because this one doesn't, doesn't do anything apart from an access point for Wi-Fi. Well, and the big suspicion was the bug converter has blown up and has killed the Raspi. I said, well, yep, the Rust is not responding anymore. Everything else seems to work on the network. That's it. I should have listened to these guys saying, well, a buck converter is not a power supply, not a reliable power supply, at least for a computer. <laughs> well, it's still working. <laughs> it is still running. So nothing has happened. Everything is fine. Everything has worked out. All right, let me log into this um, Telstra router here and set up the Wi-Fi again. And then we should be sweet again. And then here, while we are on this topic of giving you an update, well, in the last video, I showed you this battery rack, <laughs> which it will be. And a lot of people have commented and said, well, these MDF compressed shelves here are not really reliable. Because so when they get wet, they can easily bend through. And usually the shelf comes only with two supports here per shelf. But I have doubled these supports now to four. So if you look underneath here, you can see the four supports. And now it is solid. There's no bending anymore. You can see it here on the other side. Yeah, if I, if I push through here, see it's bending, but um, not, not anymore with four, with four supports here. That is rock solid now. See the, the battery is actually standing at exactly here on the support. It, it really is a bit of a bad design here. They should have made this rail here all the way around of this MDF shelf to give it more support. But 
this is actually pretty good now. Yeah, and um, some people have suggested or have asked if I would put some wheels underneath to uh, wheel this one around here. I'm not confident that this is a good idea because this rack is fairly, is only 40, 450 mil wide. If I got another battery in here, it would be good, but I'm afraid this one will be too top heavy then. And if this one tips over, <laughs> hell breaks loose in the off-grid garage. So the plan was actually to, uh, to screw this on the metal beam here when it sits here. And then we've got access only from two sides if I need to work on it. But once this is all bus barred and cabled, there should be not too much need to get actually onto the single batteries here and do some more work. Yeah, there. It has totally reset to the factory default settings. It has a different IP address as well. And the network name is not the one I need here for the Raspi. Ah, uh, let me fix this. Okay, this is now back as it was. Let's see if our Raspi has already noticed that his network is back. His Wi-Fi. No, he hasn't. Yeah, I think it's still connected to the house network. Nah, it is still three hours offline. I cannot reach the device at all. Device list. Yeah, last seen three hours ago. The Rasp doesn't connect to my new Wi-Fi anymore here. I think it needs a restart. <laughs> and unplug the cable. And back in. Red light. Yep, starting up. So eventually the Rasp should choose the stronger network signal. But um, it could take a while. Ah, yeah, we are online. Yeah, real time. We are back. See, and all the data is here, even when the Raspi was not connected to the network, to the VRM network. So as long as the Raspi is not online, it will store all the information on this little SD card. And once it gets back online, it reports all the information back to the VRM network at Victron here. And then you've got all the information. So nothing is lost. And it uses only, I think, 8 gigabyte per year. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, see it. Now you can see all my networks again. And the signal is strong. So if we go into my Wi-Fi, 88% we have. That's all right. So what I have done now is I have connected the Raspi to both of my Wi-Fi networks. The surveillance drone 4 is the Wi-Fi network on top of my house. And this is the one here in the off-grid garage. So whatever is available now, it will flip over and hopefully won't connect to the weaker house connection anymore. So I wasn't aware that you can actually connect to both networks at the same time and it just connects whatever is available or stronger. Connect to network, yes. We have to... Ah, there it is now. So it's not connected to the one here in the off-grid garage and the other one is still ticked. So it's marked as available. In case it fails, it should automatically go to the other one. And we can actually test this. Yeah, let's turn this one off. Uh, turn the Wi-Fi off. If I refresh this page now. Yeah, it's unresponsive at the moment. See, so it says failure now. Yeah, it has automatically connected to the other one on top of the house and the other one is failure. That's amazing. Okay, turn this back on. This may take a while. At least this one is a lot stronger here than the one in the house. And let's see. Yeah, it's on 47%. Not great, but at least the Rust is still available then. Then I can troubleshoot it from remote, from externally. Whew, what a shock moment <laughs> when I didn't have access to my system anymore. Everything could have happened. The whole garage could have burned down here. <laughs> Who knows? I'm not expecting something like this happens, but you know, ah, here it says connection seems offline now at the moment. Yeah, it takes a moment to reactivate and reconnect to everything, but that's good.
It's good. I learned something today because some people using Victron gear, they have this system as well with the Rust P running. And I wasn't aware that you can actually sign up to multiple Wi-Fi networks and it just picks one which is available then. So makes totally sense. It's the same in the mobile phone, right? All right, guys, so far, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Stay charged, stay safe. And we shall see us again in one of the next videos coming out very soon. I actually wanted to do something else tonight, but um, now it's already too late, so it has to wait until tomorrow. But um, yeah, tomorrow we will do something amazing with these batteries. Something I always wanted to know, and I will test this tomorrow. We will have lots of amps flowing here. Hopefully not too many. All right, guys, until tomorrow. See you then. Bye bye. Just hang on a second before you go. Well, it is now the next day and I have experienced connection issues again this morning. I could not connect to the Raspberry Pi for some time, just minutes, but then it reconnected. And I thought, what's going on? So I had a look in the remote console. Yeah, I think it's connecting right now. Yeah. So we go into the settings. Yeah, at least it's responding again now. Where is it? Wi-Fi. And look at this. It is connected to the access point on top of the house again. And the Sesam one is not even there anymore. But instead we've got the Telstra one again. So this stupid f***ing router has reset, factory reset itself again. Somewhere this morning. I don't know what's going on there, but it will go tonight. I've got five or six more of them and I will just replace it. For some reason, it factory resets itself now every day. Just not reliable anymore. Well, it's in the garage for three years now, so... And it was a used device before. And here, if we go in the... Yeah, we still got 64% strength, so this is pretty good. Three bars out of four. And this works. Actually, Clayt, I configured the second network yesterday, just in case the other one fails again, and bang, it fails the next day. I don't know why I didn't think about this before, to connect it to several Wi-Fi's. Well, it's like a mobile phone and your tablet, you know, your laptop, it can remember more than one Wi-Fi. And then it takes whatever is available. Oh, well, I guess this is all good now, as long as I know what's happening here, and I can access the Raspberry Pi here from my mobile phone. All right, guys, uh, the video is now, um, you can uh, turn off your, your... Thanks for watching. See you then.